Thank you for the organizers for inviting me to this uh, workshop. It has been really exciting so far. So I will talk about uh, superconductivity and quantum geometry. It of course relates to this uh, workshop because that's uh, something that uh, came up from flat band superconductivity. And uh, then uh, tell a bit uh, what is the relevance of those studies uh, to twisted bilayer graphene superconductivity. And then I present something that is maybe a, a bit newer than these things, namely uh, what happens to non-equilibrium superconducting transport in a flat band. So uh, let's start with uh, quantum geometry. And Professor Fu and many others already have mentioned quantum geometry. And uh, I start here with the uh, motivation of uh, yeah, when you have a geometry, you may uh, want to uh, measure some kind of distances. In this case, it's about me measuring infinitesimal distances between quantum states, like... Um... Oh, this has died. Uh, no. All right. <laughs> travel, travel, yeah. All right, so there, there you see, uh, and this... Okay. All right. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so here you see any kind of quantum wave function parameterized with something. This could be lattice momentum. And you define the distance. And uh, then uh, these uh, people introduce a gauge invariant version of a distance. You can design, de uh, define it in many ways, but uh, if you want it to be gauge invariant, then uh, comes out this uh, so-called <laughs> quantum geometric tensor, whose real part is the quantum metric and imaginary part is very curvature. And uh, yeah, this was introduced long time ago, but even longer time ago, this uh, concept this one was actually mathematically uh, defined. That was already in 1904 or something. And obviously this is related to topology because you can integrate the Berry curvature and get uh, the turn number. Now let's go to superconductivity. I'm extremely interested in um, raising the uh, temperature of superconductivity to very high uh, up to room temperature, if we uh, don't mind. Uh, it's very difficult, and of course, one uh, difficulty is that uh, the interactions have to go compete with Fermi energy, basically huge kinetic energy. And uh, in that respect, there has been already a long time uh, an idea that let's uh, kill the kinetic energy, increase density of states, uh, maybe we get better uh, critical temperatures, and that's actually the case. You can change this, oops. <laughs> Exponential suppression of ah, even better. Exponential suppression of superconducting critical temperature to linear dependence on interactions. And you see, if especially for small interactions, this is much bigger. And that happens when you have a flat band, doesn't even need to be uh, exactly flat, just when uh, interactions are much bigger than the bandwidth. Uh, you get flat band. Oh, sorry, you get this uh, enhancement. Now, this, however, tells you only about <clears throat> the pairing, Cooper pairing, whether you have pairs or so on, uh, essentially about the absolute value of your order parameter. And that's not all, because for superconductivity, you have to see whether you have supercurrent and Meissner effect. And for that, uh, the concept of superfluid weight becomes very important. That's you can uh, uh, relate the usual current relation and then supercurrent relation. You see, it's very, very different fundamentally. Here you have the vector potential here, electric field. And this thing is like conductivity, but it's called superfluid weight. Now, here you see vector potential. That's, of course, not gauge invariant. And uh, superconducting. Uh, uh, order parameter space is not gauge one invariant either, but if you combine them, you get a, a gauge invariant quantity. So uh, this, uh, this makes then connection between ds and the order parameter. 
and the connection is the following for instance if you <clears throat> think that uh, the change on the order parameter phase is like the velocity or um, yeah change in uh, cooper per velocity then uh, the change in the free energy when you uh, in, add that kind of uh, current is given by this formula where you now have the superfluid weight so it's uh, kind of like inverse mass of the Cooper pairs. And it also appears then in uh, the penetration depth. So we should have this quantity non-zero to have a superconductivity, really. Gap alone is not enough. And let's look at the standard PCS result for it. So forget about this. This is small. Here, it's essentially density of electrons or Cooper pairs divided by effective mass. Unfortunately, this is zero in a flat band because it's proportional to the, uh, uh, to the dispersion. However, this is a single band result. And uh, this audience knows very well that very interesting flat bands emerge in from, uh, uh, from multiband systems. So there might be something else. And we set to uh, study this question in 2015, and there is a lot of work since. Uh, I would like to hi highlight here three very important people from my group, uh, starting from Sebastiano Peota, who has been there from the beginning, and then excellent uh, collaborations with many other groups, uh, especially with Sebastian Huber and Andrei Bernevik. And now you see a kind of a summary of these results. But we started with uh, considering um, a simple Hubbard model where um, we just assume that there are some kind of attractive interactions. However, the important point was that it's a genuinely multiband system. So these indices alpha and beta here now refer to the orbitals. You have several orbitals in the unit cell. And, and then we calculate the superfluid weight. <coughs> uh, you can uh, obtain it. Uh, I mean, first we put a supercurrent in via this uh, phase of the order parameter. Then we calculate the superfluid weight. You can get it from the free energy like this and via this uh, relation between uh, the phase and the vector potential. You can also see uh, that it's uh, obtained from a linear response to the vector potential. And these are, of course, the same. And, and this in time reversal system, the symmetry system, it's the, you can use the ground potential. So we have used both methods and indeed they give the same. And now I jump directly to the result. So uh, we found that, okay, yes, there is something that everybody knows. Uh, we called it a conventional contribution, this thing that is proportional to this person and is zero in a flat band. But there is another contribution, and that one exists only in multiband systems and can be non-zero in a flat band. And we call it geometry because in certain limits, it becomes proportional to the interaction, like the gap, and to the quantum metric that I introduced in the beginning. So it's really of a, a geometric origin. Now let's see a, a little bit. Uh, more detail what this superfluid weight actually uh, includes in a flat band. So uh, you get uh, nice uh, analytical results in certain limits. For instance, if we uh, assume we are in the flat band limit, so um, band bit much smaller than interaction and isolated band limit, that the interaction is smaller than the gap to the uh, following band. And furthermore, we do one uh, approximation that is, uh, or assumption, that is often done uh, in these studies, uh, namely uniform pairing. We assume that the pairing is the same in all orbitals where it's non-zero. This sounds like, oh, well, uh, quite an assumption, but actually this is true always when orbitals are related uh, by a symmetry. So it can be found also in realistic systems. With these assumptions, the superfluid weight has a very nice form. It's well, here is the linear proportion, uh, nullity to interactions, and new is filling, so it's maximized at half filling. Doesn't grow with uh, uh, density like the usual one, it's maximized here. 
uh, here's number of orbitals. And this thing is the quantum metric integrated over the uh, Brillo zone. So Professor Fu was calling this quantity uh, quantum weight. But uh, yeah, it's this uh, integral. So there we have the uh, quantum geometric part, and this uh, well has been shown by mean field exact results and also numerically by many people. And then uh, you can <clears throat> also calculate what, the, what is the gap. It's like this, and using that, you get that the superfluid weight is proportional to the square of the gap. Note here something. So one actually has to uh, take the minimum value of this thing. Because uh, th this is something that has not been widely appreciated uh, uh, or actually noticed at all before this uh, work. That uh, quantum metric and very curvature are actually basis dependent quantities. If you change the position of the orbitals while keeping everything else same, same uh, you get a different quantum metric and different very curvature. However, many physical quantities don't depend on these positions. Uh, superfluid weight doesn't. So therefore, actually, you have to uh, use so-called minimum version. And uh, this does not mean that you need to minimize something, because actually we also showed that the quantum metric is always minimal when the orbitals are at the high symmetry positions in the lattice. All right. So uh, this quantum geometry tensor is, po is a, a positive semi-definite, and that allows to um, uh, derive many in inequalities. And uh, this allowed us to show that the superfluid weight or flat band super uh, uh, conductivity has a fundamental bound given by chair number. This result is for time reversal symmetric system. So this is actually a, a spin chair number. And of course it's enough if you have very curvature so somewhere in the band or, or naturally if you have just a non-zero quantum metric that alone uh, guarantees. But the cell number gives you a very, very nice uh, bound. So now we have learned that uh, in this uh, quest of uh, higher critical temperatures, it's not only that we can play with interactions and density of states, we can also play uh, with the block functions, topology, quantum geometry, this can help you to get, get there to the goal. And why? Why is there this kind of a relation? Well, this is one way of looking at it uh, intuitively. And now assume that you have <clears throat> very, very tightly localized, um, let's say, one near functions or electron wave functions, the, the atomic limit, so to speak. Uh, then if you introduce interactions, nothing much happens. However, in these interesting flat bands like Lieb lattice, Gagome lattice, and so on, we know uh, that um, uh, the flatness of the band is due to destructive interference. And then there, it's possible that you actually have large overlaps of one year functions and still a flat band. And then when you introduce interactions, it turns out that you can get current, you can get movement. And why that is related to topology is because the localization uh, properties of one near functions are basically governed by quantum geometry and topology. Okay, so I showed you some mean field results, but it, it's very nice that this basic uh, phenomena can be found also by exact methods. And uh, yeah, uh, you think that uh, you have a flat band and uh, interactions are relatively strong and everything is highly co 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 correlated. So you might not be able to um, do anything analytically, but it turns out that you can get very nice analytical results in the limit of an isolated flat band. So here we do a projection to the flat band and we use this uniform pairing condition. It looks like this in um, this language. So this is a projector to the flat band. We might have many of them. And with this, 
you can express the Hamiltonian that I showed in the beginning as a positive uh, definite uh, Hamiltonian like this with some uh, spin operator. And this one has exact uh, uh, a ground state of eta pairs. So this type of uh, Cooper pairs. And then it turns out that the excitations are governed by a single particle Hamiltonian, which is formed from these protectors. And if it, since it's a single particle Hamiltonian, you can solve it. And we can uh, show that this inverse effective mass of the Cooper pairs, which is the superfluid weight, it's proportional to the minimal uh, quantum metric. So we get the same result as from multiband uh, BCS theory from this XR treatment, plus a lot of other uh, collective modes. And uh, one more thing I want to show uh, about uh, something quite important about flat band superconductivity is that uh, here, this is the Lieb model and you can open a gap here. And the critical temperature as function of interactions, uh, first of all, it's highest when there is a band touching. So having other bands touching the isolated, uh, I'm mean, sorry, the flat band is by no means a problem, except for theorists who want analytical results, but uh, actually you get higher critical temperatures. Another thing is that things are, these flat band things are great for small interaction. At higher, uh, higher interactions, this is the square at this case, you can get a uh, better uh, TC in the, uh, yeah, simply in a usual dispersive band. But in uh, small interaction, flat bands really, really win. Okay, I'd have to uh, rush a bit. I think I uh, skipped this one uh, because it's a bit old. It's just uh, advertise our review article and we did, uh, some calculations where we uh, show that this uh, geometric contribution could be uh, big in a uh, twisted bilayer graphene. And now there are experiments where they uh, measure not, not the superfluid weight, but they measure critical field, critical current. And from that, they deduce the superfluid weight and it goes like this. And this line would be the conventional form. So it really doesn't fit. And then they have some kind of something that scales uh, more like the gap, which resembles uh, the superfluid weight uh, that we derive. Okay, but uh, I want to have a couple of minutes uh, on, on this thing. We were asking now that, okay, everything so far has been equilibrium physics. Supercurrent is a ground state property and so on. What if we have flat band superconductor and imposable voltage? And uh, for that, we consider this kind of um, toy model system with uh, two leads and something in between. And this something in between, it's a piece of a sawtooth ladder, which in the infinite case would have one flat band, one dispersive. And as a ladder, small piece, it has some states that are still like flat band states. And then others who are dispersive. Now we can, in our uh, calculation, uh, have a gate potential and look what happens here, what happens here. Compare dispersion and flat band non-equilibrium transport. And the point was, this is, was really non-equilibrium, so everything was time dependent, and then we used the uh, uh, Keldys formalism to get the results. And here we look at the current, so defined like this. And as a, uh, yeah, with the gate voltage, we can see what happens at the dispersive bands. And they are independent whether we look at the DC or AC current, whether there are interactions or not, the current goes through them. However, in the flat band, that's very interesting. Only the AC current in the interacting case goes through. That is the super current. There is nothing when there are no interactions, so that's uh, understandable, it's an insulator. But also with interactions, the DC current does not go through. And in this kind of system where you have voltage, uh, the DC current would normally go via multiple entree reflections. And it seems that the flat bands don't like them. They don't like that it in involves quasi-particle movement. That's our interpretation. And then, yeah, if we have one of the leads is normal, not superconducting, then nothing goes through the flat band. So this 
appears like in a flat band, it would be pure uh, supercurrent, no quasi-particle motion. And that could be important because quasi-particles are, of course, a nuisance in many uh, quantum devices. So that's uh, kind of a new aspect. It's not only that we can increase critical temperature by quantum geometry, but it could be also that we can have much more pure supercurrent than in uh, dispersive systems. So uh, this uh, is, is the, my main conclusions. And uh, I want to advertise, we have a, a lot of postdoc positions. I, I have started the big collaboration with this, uh, all these famous people. Uh, so <laughs> it's not only me. <laughs> and I, I have several positions. So if you know somebody who is interested, and if you're interested yourself, you can talk to me in this conference. I stay until Wednesday morning. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, first of all, uh, of course, the um, definition of the quantum metric is the usual one. That's correct. It's only when you uh, connect to some physical quantities that you need to worry about this, uh, um, that is the minimal one. For instance, for in context of super fluid weight, it really has to be this minimal one. Um, yeah, I mean, if you have a continuum system, if it's a single band system, everything is trivial. I, I think even in continuum, you have to have like a, at least two uh, degrees of freedom. So, so the same thing is there also. It's, it relates to how do you take your Fourier transforms? Yeah. Very much that. Uh, what about the fact that it's not supposed to be weight? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, my question is that uh, the particular attack is that uh, sometimes there's also meaning fragmentation. Yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, yeah, moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is a very important thing. People should study that more. We haven't studied very much, uh, but there are some uh, studies by others who have shown, shown that at least some cases the super uh, superconductivity wins. Yeah, my question is related. So if I start from all those uh, uh, impulsive interactions, of course, the attacking interactions, uh, my reading is that then it becomes the point of some problem where you have fragments in a condensed array and other channels yeah. that compete. And uh, so, so, to what extent results that are derived in sort of um, a package uh, interact with other model based calculations that are the way actually coming to play? Yeah, so so um, the attractive interaction as such is not so essential. For instance, in this study, we have uh, studied also this is uh, twisted by layer study. We looked at also uh, like this kind of, oh, see here, are we B type uh, interact uh, pairing that you would get from uh, uh, repulsive interactions. And, and, and then you have this uh, geometric contribution as well. So it comes from there. But then the competition is, of course, another thing. So, so mainly the argument here is that if you have superconductivity, then you will have the superfluidity. I, I mean, if you have, if this wins, then you will have current. But you should always compare the two, two phases, which one wins. Same with the EPA, which is not strange. It can be in some side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe about this What is there any family limitations in the topology idea? Is uh, sorry, ideal. Uh, 
Well, uh, yeah, yeah, usually these Landau levels are more like ideal flat bands, and then it, uh, yeah. So, so, so this, um, the, it's our conditions. They are really like saturated in the Landau level systems, and in other flat band systems, typically not. Uh, I, I mean, how how um, where would I have the that uh, that the superfluid weight is exactly given by the chair number. That that happens uh, only in a flat band system. In others, it's bigger. <laughs> yeah, and we, because this you don't even need chair numbers. Chair number can be zero if there is just uh, quantum uh, geometry. Then then you get also superfluid weight. But the Landau level systems are kind of special. Uh, yes, yes. If you have a Dirac cone at the crossing, the uh, density of states is basically zero. So, but what do you mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That it's the second derivative. Yeah, so in, in this uh, Dirac systems, it's known that if you get this quantum critical pairing. Yes, that's a good question. I never thought about it, but that's how it, yeah, because it's really inverse effective mass. So, but there will be the co <laughs> quantum geometric contribution, but uh, yeah, naively, I think it would go to zero. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be there. Yeah. 